Today we are going to be talking about using the application.properties file. So this is a way to customize Spring Boot to change up some of the default properties of your application. So <coughs> when you start Spring Boot or when you run Spring Boot application, you have the application starts running using default properties. But you can actually go and change uh, this default. So Without wasting time, I'm going to open the application.properties file so that I'm sure I'm going to show you how it works. So if you open your application, you go to SRC main resource and you can see application.properties. Now, now this application.properties uh, is empty. And it's also possible that the application.properties is not there uh, as well. So if it's not there, uh, it's simple. So what you can do so let, let me just show you that you can create it by yourself. I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to create a new one so that you can see. So in SRC main resource, just right click and just say new. Uh, under new, uh, simply choose order here. Yeah. So or you, yeah, just choose order. So at this point, so you can just type properties so it doesn't so uh, it doesn't work so and just leave it at general and just say file and just go next so in the file name just type application the properties so make sure you type the name correctly so that uh, springbot is going to recognize it as a properties file all right so finish so if you type the name correctly, you can see that it recognizes it as an application.properties file, okay? Now, one thing we can change uh, is the port number where this application runs. Because now, it's possible that we can be running this application on port 8080 and then uh, port 8080 is in use. So if we take, for instance, I start up this server, let's assume I start up this server here, and it starts, most likely this Pivotal TC server might uh, run at port 8080, I don't know. So if port 8080 is now occupied, it means that we cannot use uh, port 8080. So if I go to my Spring Boot application and I'm going to run it as Spring Boot application. So now, let's see. So it fails. So it says, uh, let me show you, the Tomcat connector, connector configured to listen port 8080 failed to start. The port may already be in use or misconfigured. So how do we now uh, tell Spring Boot to use a different port? Because there are different ports we can use. Because this port 8080 is now in use. All right, so that we can do in the application.properties file. The reason is because port 8080 is default and now we can change the default value to something else. So let's say we want to use port uh, 8090. So let's say you could just say server dot port. So it gives you some intelligence equal to 8090. Uh, okay. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to run this uh, project again. So I'm going to run us, uh, run a Spring Boot app. And now you can see that it starts, everything works. So if we go to the console, you can say Tomcat started on port 8090. So if I go to my browser, now I can access my API in port 8090. So if I go to localhost, if I go to port 8080 and let's say users, uh, I don't get anything. But if I want to access this list of users, I can just go to port 8090 and I access this list of users. So basically, you specify the default values in um, in the application properties file. So there are a whole lot of things you can specify. Uh, you can specify in the application properties file. You can specify and uh, values to change the default values now in the application properties file it's simple to specify values using key value pay so in this case we have we have server ports equals value so we have the key we have the value 
Now, how do you know the keys to use? Because I mean, you have the values, you just want to change values. How do you know the keys to use? Uh, there are common application properties that default has been set. Like this one is our, that port is a common application property that has been set by default by Spring. Now, to get different other default values that is possible to change, you can use common application properties page. Let me just show you how to get this page. So if you open Chrome, uh, let me just... Now, this link, I'm going to put it in the description box. So look at the description box. You can see this link. Docs, the Spring Desire, Spring Build, Docs, Current Reference, HTML, Common Application Properties, just HTML. You see this link and you find it. So in this case, you can see the bug is equal to false, trace is equal to false, uh, log.config is equal to, and uh, let's now look for server.port so that you can see that we are actually doing something from here. All right, so now go back home. So, so in this case, we have uh, management uh, server that bot. So let's just scroll down. Okay, good. So this one is HTTP server that bot. So this is what we just changed uh, right now. So as you can see. So any of them, for instance, you want to change the uh, server that SSL ciphers, uh, SSL client out. So you can actually change all these values uh, if there is any one you need to change. Any value you need to change, for instance, we have Spring uh, Date Format, you can change it to something else. So you might not need this now, but when time comes, you might actually need it later and simply go to my description box of this video, go to this page and see the name of the key and use the figure out what value to use. I'm going to stop here. And in the next tutorial, we are now going to continue with uh, Spring uh, JPA, uh, that is Java Persistent, Java Persistence API, and we we'll see how we can create a crude repository to handle our our, uh, our data assets. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I remain kind to the genius, and I'll also remind you to subscribe if you've not subscribed to my channel.